maintenance and installation. And here he goes. Lastly and probably the most important problem is there's no machine shop. All dynamic systems require installation and maintenance. No matter how carefully designed and how advanced a system is, something will require machining. All large Navy craft, I'm looking at you, Sean, have onboard machine shops. The reason that I use ships and submarines as examples is that they are the most similar systems to the ISS that we can relate to. They are moving, large, self-contained, and functioning in hostile environments. Navy vessels must be able to repair, modify, or replace anything on board. Even under the best conditions, metal will warp, screw threads will strip out, seals will leak, welds will break, metal sealing surfaces will get scratched, tubes will crack, electronics will short out, motors will overheat, motors will freeze up, critical tools will break, belts will break, cables will snap, etc., etc. The ISS appears to not have a machine shop whatsoever. How are repairs done? Are we to believe that all the replacement parts are flawless modules that snap together perfectly every time like Legos? Are there C containers full of replacement parts floating next door? Is there never a time that a critical threaded hole is stripped out and needs to be retapped? Do parts never warp in the extreme temperatures and need to be resurfaced? Is there welding equipment up there? Submarines have welding equipment. They can even weld underwater. What happens in the event of a structural event that requires welding? I know that Captain Kirk and Spock repairing the Enterprise using a phaser as a welder, but this is supposed to be real. Of course, the chance of fire is too great to weld, but structural damage happens and has to be calculated into the plan. As far as I know, it's not. Regarding fire hazards, machine shops throw sparks, lots of sparks. Even if you could haul a lathe, bridge port, and drill, drill, drill press up to the ISS, the danger would be too extreme. This is where NASA shot themselves in the foot. For short missions, days, even weeks, this would not be an issue. But when the missions are years long, no. The ISS is great theater, but it is not reality. Thank you, the Valve guy. He's absolutely 100% correct. Um, we do have a machine shop on board yeah. where we get parts in that are, you know, shipped into us by helicopter or by an underway replenishment. Yeah. And they don't always work out perfectly. And we have that machine shop on board to take care of any welding needs, any you know, machining needs to help everything fit together properly because nothing's perfect. Like you said, you have to account for uh, that hostile environment that you spoke of. And for, you know, them having that, you know, ISS up there, you don't see any of that machinery anywhere. It's not something that, you know, you, you see, you don't see Mike in the background, you know, with, uh, what's her name, Medusa. You know, he's photobombing her in her screenshot. You know, it, it doesn't yeah. happen. You yeah. never see any of that. Yeah. And, yeah, he's 100% correct. And if anyone doesn't believe me, uh, you can go online, do a simple Google search, and look up the rate, the enlisted rate in the Navy called MR. Yeah. And you will know what I'm talking about. MRs are the ones that deal with working out of the machine shop on our boats. Uh, that was the, the first thing that he mentioned to me when he first contacted me. He goes, he goes where's the machine shop? He goes, machine shops are amazingly heavy and uh, amazingly labor-intensive. And it, he goes, then submarines absolutely need them, and Navy ships need them. And, and anything that's a big hunk of metal that's self-contained needs a machine shop. You need to be able to grind down uh, parts from scratch. That's, that's basically what a machine shop does. And, and the ISS doesn't have it. So It's just really really long cylindrical compartments and you know it's cluttered with mini shelves and fake toilets and a couple laptops and yeah you know yeah 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 i hear you 
I'm sorry, Sean. We, we, you, I was I was hoping you could do a little more of a summary as well. And that was yeah, from a Navy ship standpoint, because what he's saying is is the uh, the Navy ships and the Navy submarines are about as close as we're going to get to comparing uh, the ISS system. And what he's saying is is the those systems are so far removed that there's no way there's no way the ISS could be saying what they're what what they th- what they're doing. I mean, it's it's not real. Can't be. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I I have to agree with the Valve guy. Yeah. And just from my experience alone, uh, I will be fair and say that I'm not a Valve tech professional. Yeah. But I know enough about the inner workings of how the ship operates to know and see with my own eyes how much, you know, of a maintenance-intensive uh, group of people have to be on standby always to service this kind of uh, equipment. Yeah, yeah, and and you um yeah, and you can attest. I mean, uh, you know, even on the on the ships you're working on. Uh, granted, your ship's a little bigger than some of the others, but you have teams. That's all they do is just they have this huge list, and they're just repairing and swapping out stuff daily. And yeah. every you know eight hours. At, well, in fact, do they do they even have shifts? Do they run twenty four seven? They 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 literally run 24 7 because there's always someone on call we have different watches set up on the ship that are literally waiting on standby for something to break something that needs to be fixed routinely uh whether it be preventative maintenance or corrective maintenance 